Okay, okay, right. We'll start. Uh, got the boss papers after one. Right, never mind. You'll get a printed one now. Okay. So now I want you all to follow this trick. Now, some of you all have this problem, you guys. Uh, it's hard to stay focused on a uh, theory, a product online class. No, in an online class, it's a little hard to stay focused compared to a physical class. Okay. So I'll give you the biggest tip for this how to stay focused during an online class without falling asleep or without thinking of anything else, how to stay focused. Number one is if you're on your laptop or something, please put your phone aside because otherwise what happens, you're on your laptop, you're on your phone as well, right? So have that discipline to keep your phone aside. So avoid any distraction. Stay in a proper, in your room or wherever you are, Right? If you're on your laptop, don't meddle with your phone. If you're on your phone also, keep it on Zoom. Not on bed and, you know, look, don't look up and wait like that. Keep it nicely on your table and, you know, have your papers in front of you. Sit on a table and wait. That's number one. The second thing that you all should do to stay focused is reply on the chat box. Take the effort to reply on the chat box. You know, for small, small questions that I ask, say at least yes or no or... Whatever answer keeps tending. That is helping your mind to stay in this class. Because otherwise what happens, you will just look at the screen and wait. You are five minutes later, you are thinking of something else. So always, you know, keep sending stuff on the chat box, right? Reply any, any nonsense. Keep on sending something so that your mind also knows you're in class. You're in class. You know what to do. So those are a few things that you can do. Did you all understand that? Yes. Understand what to do. Okay, nice. I have a lot of yeses now. Okay, good. I have around uh, 1, 2, 40. Right, I have around 70 yeses. Good. Okay, right. Other 30 of you all, I'm hoping you all are also uh, not falling asleep and you all are also there. Okay, we'll start with a few things, guys. We'll start with number one. Explain the following concepts. Micro and macro economics. Now, most of you all know this. What is microeconomics? Microeconomics is where the part of economics where we study the behavior of a small part of economy. Micro. If we study a small part of the economy, we call it microeconomics. So, if you study about an individual, if you study about a business, if you study about, let's say, a household, right? That is called what? That is called microeconomics. Okay. Then what is macroeconomics? Macroeconomics is where you study about the entire economy, not a small part, entire economy. So look at the examples here. Now, if you study about inflation, now do we say uh, inflation of Colombo, inflation of this? No, no, we say inflation rate of Sri Lanka, whole part of the economy. Then employment, unemployment, aggregate demand. You'll study this in unit number six, okay? And then all of those are what? Those are macroeconomic concepts. Then what is micro? What are the examples here? Uh, the price of one good, right? How the price of one good is behaving. Small part of the economy, okay? How the uh, labor market is behaving, right? One small labor, uh, engineering labor market or labor market for teachers small part of the economy. Then if we talk about how a consumer is behaving, how much how much of goods is he buying, what is the price he is willing to pay, small part, right? So remember, what is microeconomics? When you focus on only a small segment of the economy. What is macro? When you focus on the overall economy. That's macroeconomics, which is a very basic thing which you all already know. Can you all let me know if this part is fine, guys? Micro and macro. Now, remember, before the class, ideally, you all have to study this and come. Huh? Remember, that's how the plan is. No? So today, I know none of you all have gone through this and come. But once you all get the tune, remember the focus areas, go through and come, okay? Then only, because I will not be reading word by word in the tune. This tune is for you all to read and come and get that done. Then we'll go to this. Positive and normative state. What are positive and normative statements? We say a positive statement 
is something like a fact. What does fact mean? I am saying a positive statement is a fact. In other words, a positive statement is about what has happened, what will happen, right? It's a fact. And guys, can you all tell me, right? These positive statements, yes, factual versus subjective, right? Can you prove this? What do you all think? Can you all prove positive statement? Yes or no? Can you prove whether this is right or wrong? A positive statement? Yes. Positive statements, guys, right? It can be tested. In other words, you can prove whether this is right or wrong. Yeah? Now, if I tell you, right, positive statements should be true statements. Do you all agree with me there? Positive statements are the statements which are true. Yes or no? Does a positive statement have to be true? Okay, I'll give you a simple example. I'll tell you, right, okay. Uh, if class fees increase, if class fees increases, quantity demanded for classes will increase. Now, this is false, no, guys. If class fees increase, people will stop going for classes. No? This is false. My question is, right, this is not true. My question is, is it a positive statement, though? If class fees increase, quantity demand for class fees, quantity demanded for classes will increase. This is false. Complete false. My question is, is it a positive statement? Is it a positive statement? That is where most of you all get confused, guys. Is it a positive statement? It is a positive statement, right? Positive yet false. Now, some people think the positive statement means statements which are true. No, no, no. Positive statements are facts. You can prove whether this is true or false. Positive statements can be true also, can be false also. But you can prove whether it's true or false. Now you can see, you know, now next month, okay, now this month my theory class fee is uh, 2,500. Next month I am saying, uh, okay, class fee still run is 4,000. Then I can see what is happening to the demand for my classes. Is it coming down? No, is it going up? I can prove, no? I can test and see. So remember, positive statements does not necessarily mean they are true. Positive statements can be false also. But the, that is not the distinctive feature. Positive statements means they are facts. They are about what? They are about, right? They are, you are based on empirical evidence. That means you can find evidence and you can prove it. Okay, look at the examples here. See, positive relationship exists between money supply and prices. Uh, negative relationship exists between price and quantity demanded. Uh, Sri Lanka's unemployment level is 44%. Now, I'll tell you this is definitely false. Sri Lanka's unemployment level is only around 5%. We don't have 44% unemployed. This is false. But still, why is it a positive statement? It's a positive statement because I can test it, no? I can take some uh, central bank statistics or something and I can see whether this is true or false. See, population growth in Sri Lanka is 1%. Maybe it is 1%, maybe 2%, 5%, I don't know. But it still can be proven. It's a fact. So that is what you call a positive statement. Now you all will understand this better when I teach you normative. Okay. So remember, positive statements are facts which can be proven or disproven. You can prove whether this is right or whether this is wrong. It can be proven. That's a positive statement. Then what's a normative statement, Lama? Normative statement, we say, this is, right? We say a normative statement is what? A statement about a person's opinion, right? Personal opinion. This is what we say, normative statement. 
Now, normative statements, guys, is there right or wrong in this normative statement? Can you say true or false? For a normative statement, can you say this statement is true, this one? You can't, right? Look at this. I'll, I'll give you an example. Here, see, okay. Number one, the country should increase monthly salary of every government worker by 5,000. Country should increase monthly salary of every government worker by 5,000. Now, if I ask you, is this true or false? Can you give me an answer like that? Can you say, yes, sir, this is true. Yes, sir, this is wrong. You can't say that, right? What is this? This is a personal opinion, right? So, it can be, uh, maybe we should, maybe we should not. So, they are saying, the government should, a country should increase the salary of government workers by 5,000. Now, I am saying, yes, yes, right. The cost, uh, cost of living has gone up, no? Right now, it's very expensive. Goods and services are expensive. So, let's increase the salary. That is my opinion. You will come and say, sir, no, sir, these government workers, they are charging a lot of bribes also from people. So, addition to their salary, these policemen and all, they are earning way more than that. So, don't increase that. So that is your opinion. Now, is there a right or wrong? No right. My opinion is saying, seeing no right, cost of living is high, let's increase. You're saying, no, sir, they are useless people. They don't even provide efficient service. They are charging bribes also. Don't increase. So is there a right or wrong now? There is no right or wrong. It's a personal opinion. Subjective. There is no right or wrong. So I am saying mehemakaram, you are saying nanasa api mehemakaram. So is there a right or wrong? No, that's what you call a normative statement, guys. Normative statements are subjective. You can't prove whether this is right or wrong. And then, okay, we'll give another one. Uh, okay, this one. Every citizen should be given free medical facility. Now, I will say, right, uh, healthcare is an important need for everyone, right? Healthcare, healthcare is an uh, important need for everyone. So, therefore, they should be given free medical pass. You will come and tell me, sir, look here, right? Our government doesn't have money to give free healthcare. So, let's charge at least 200 rupees. So, I am saying let's give free. You are saying, no, sir, let's charge 200. Is there a right or wrong? No right or wrong. This is a personal opinion. So that is what you call a normative statement. So let me recap positive again since one person had a doubt. So what's a positive statement once again? A positive statement is a fact. Now these things you can prove or disprove. Now see for example, positive relationship exists between price and uh, money between money supply and price. You can say, you know, you can test and see, uh, is there a positive, the negative, then you can say whether this is true or false. Then here, Sri Lanka's unemployment level is 44%. So you can calculate and you can test and see, uh, is it 44% or not? So those are called positive statements, statements which are fact and can be proven. But if you take a normative statement, guys, these statements are personal opinions personal judgment, these you can't prove. Those are normative statements. There's a very nice question in the uh, paper we'll do. Okay. So is that part okay, guys? Positive and normative. Uh, value judgments means based on some person's belief. Okay. Now, for example, okay. Now, let's say, for example, okay. Let's say, okay, I'm Muslim, right? So maybe according to my values or my ethnicity, I feel, okay, eating pork is not right. Some of you all will say, no, sir, it's fine. Now, is there a right or wrong? No. So, I am saying, according to my values, okay, I don't eat pork. Some of you all will say, okay, no, sir, no problem, sir, we we'll need pork. So, is there a right or wrong? That's why I say a value judgment. So, my values are different from your values. Yeah? So, there is no right or wrong there. I can't say, you know, my religion is the best, your religion is not the best. <laughs> right? There is nothing like that. Okay. Is everyone fine, guys? Positive, normative? Step, can you give me a yes or a no? In the uh, examples positive, yes, there's examples of positive. Uh, ah, sorry, guys. So you can make a correction here. Thank you for pointing. 
these are examples for normative statement okay small typing mistake okay. good to see some of you all have uh, read the team text good okay then now that part is done now that is easier that's why i didn't spend too much of time now if i i can spend one whole day teaching you all positive normative what's the point okay uh, then we'll get into this part now what is meant by goods what are goods these goods are anything that satisfies human wants in economics how do we define goods anything that satisfies human wants that is what you call a good and goods provide what goods provide we say positive satisfaction can you all give me another name for positive satisfaction guys tagalagian what's another name for positive satisfaction we say goods provide positive satisfaction another name for positive satisfaction is ah utility utility right positive satisfaction is also called utility so anything that provides utility or anything that provides positive satisfaction now what is this positive satisfaction that means when you consume this good you feel good now for example some of you all are there now in the 2 hour class 2 and 1/2 hour class now you're sitting and you're learning equal now at the end of this class if you all feel good right okay i learned something this will help me with my exam then you can consider this class as a good but the problem comes if you didn't learn something and you will win in when i went to this class then that's another thing that we'll learn that later but remember what is a good anything that provides positive satisfaction you feel good when you consume it you eat something your hunger goes off you feel good right you wear some clothes you all take around 100 selfies all the girls right you all feel good yeah that's what you call a good in economy then there are two types of goods guys what are the two types of goods two types of goods number one we you have non economic and economic what's the difference what is this economic good and non economic good there are two types of goods one is economic goods me monad me we say economic goods are the goods that are scarce in supply usually they have a price but not necessarily not a essential he i've said goods economic goods are those which have a price but i have clearly mentioned not a essential characteristic so even if you don't write that part it's okay so economic goods are the goods that are scarce what does that mean that means these goods are limited compared to our unlimited wants you don't have unlimited of these goods so these goods are scarce they are produced using scarce resources right that's what you call a economic good and can you tell me guys okay what are the key things that you have to say when you are writing an answer about economic goods one thing you have to say it is scarce okay that's number one you need to say that these goods are produced with human intervention they are produced with human intervention okay and also they are produced using scarce resources what can you tell about opportunity cost guys about these goods is there an opportunity cost when producing economic yes so no opportunity cost yes so no what do you all remember can't remember come on what do you all remember opportunity cost yes there is an opportunity cost we'll learn opportunity cost in detail Uh, next class also so there is a opportunity cost there is also something called a resource cost not only opportunity cost something called a resource cost what is resource cost now this is a produced good no for land you have to pay rent labor you have to pay wages so for your resources that you use you have to pay that's what you call a resource cost cost of production so remember when you are writing a answer about an economic good you need to say that these are the goods that are limited in other words they are scarce 
there is human intervention produced using human intervention. They use scarce resources. Therefore, there is an opportunity cost and also a resource cost. Those key words have to be there in your answer. How you word it, how you figure the answer out, that's okay. You can, you know, you don't have to memorize the same example I have given. But those key points have to be there. Then, guys, what is the other type of good? If this is economic good, what is the other type non-economic? What is this? We say non-economic goods are the goods that are unlimited in supply. They are non-scarce. Non-scarce. What, what does non-scarce mean? There is no scarcity. You have any amount of that. Means there is unlimited amount. Right? What can you tell about uh, are these goods produced using human intervention or are they like a gift of nature? What do you think? Non-economic goods. Are they produced by people? These unlimited things like sunlight, rain, water, air. Right? Gift of nature. No, see, I'm gift of nature. What can you tell about uh, an opportunity cost? Is there an opportunity cost of consuming or producing these non-economic? No, no. Because unlimited. Now, why is there no opportunity cost? Now, do you have to choose? Right? Uh, today with my sunlight, I am going to uh, dry this clothes. Tomorrow, I will dry my other clothes. Day after tomorrow, I will put something else to dry. Do I have to make that choice? No. There is unlimited amount of sunlight. You wash your clothes, put all of it to dry. So there is no opportunity cost. There is nothing that you have to sacrifice. There is no production process also. Because these are gifts from nature. So that's what you call a non-economic good. Remember, there are two types of goods. First one is economic. Economic goods are the goods that are limited in supply. They are limited in supply. Produced using human intervention. So examples, anything that is around you, right? Think about your phone, uh, laptop, right? Maybe a book, right? Say so, yeah, anything, anything produced using human intervention is an economic good. Any good that there is a limited supply. Then what's a non-economic good? A good that you have unlimited amounts. Oh, na tarang tiyan, right? Sunlight is there, air is there, rain water is there. That's what you call a non-economic good. Is that okay, guys? What is a good? What is an economic and a non-economic good? Step. Okay. Then can I ask you? Can we convert a economic good to a non-economic? Can we convert an economic good to a non-economic? Yes or no? Something like a pen or a uh, thing like that, can we convert it into non-economic? Can't, no. Now, economic good means a good that has already been produced using human intervention. You can't undo it now, no. You can't. Then my next question is, can a non-economic good be converted to economic? Can something like rain, water, sunlight, air, maker can we convert? Can we convert non-economic to economic? What do you all think? Yes or no? This we can. Give me an example, Balan. Can you give me an example? Yes. Good example, bottled water. Now, the water that you get from rain and all, right? Non-economic. But if you purify this, bottle it and nicely give, that becomes economic. Then oxygen, the air that you and me breathe right now, non-economic. But if this air is put into a cylinder, given to a diver or given to patients, then economic. Think of even solar panels and stuff. Sunlight, non-economic. But if you convert that into a solar panel and solar energy, I don't know how that works. Then it becomes an economic good. So remember, economic good, you can't convert back to non-economic. Okay? 
you can't convert it to a non economic good other side you can a non economic good you can convert to a economic good this can happen so these are exam is that okay step fine not okay. right now goods is also done what is a bad debt? what is a bad debt? a bad is something that gives you negative satisfaction now good we said gives you positive satisfaction you feel good no now a bad is something which gives you negative satisfaction or in other words it gives you this utility example guys garbage you can say snow you can give uh, diseases you can give uh, pollution these are all economic bad which mean you will pay a price to get rid of it right you will pay a price to get rid of it because why it's giving you negative satisfaction now my question to you guys can you tell me if something like a cigarette or something like alcohol or if something like drugs let's say ganja heroin and all are these economic bad yes or no are they economic bad what do you think now economic bad we said is something that is giving negative value it has a negative price means you will pay money to get rid of it right that's what you call economic bad think just think and tell me guys do you all pay money to get rid of this do you pay money to get rid of alcohol do you pay money to get rid of cigarette no no you will pay money and buy a cigarette will you say ah menna me salli tiya gana take this cigarette and go no no you are saying you know ah mudalali give me the cigarette you pay the how much is cigarette now i don't know 100 right we we'll say 100 and right so you are paying 100 rupees to buy the cigarette so what does that mean guys that means remember These are bad for your health. I understand, but bad for health. You know that doesn't mean it's economic bad. Easy way to think is, think if people will pay money to get rid of it, or will they pay money to get it? So these kind of things, these are economic goods, guys. Why are they economic goods? Because people will pay money to buy these, right? They are produced using scarce resources. People will pay money to buy. But look at economic bads. Now another question I have is: the snow is good, no sir. Now we like to play with snow, no sir. Now in these places there is snow world. Uh, we go and go. I am not talking about a snow world, guys. I am talking about actual snow, right? If you would have, I don't know if you all know this. If you all would have, snow is something that people don't really like, guys. If you look at in the countries that are snowing, okay, where are the the cold is so bad right people will pay money they have heaters inside their house now we might have acs inside our house no acs and fans they have heaters right to feel them make them feel hot and every morning right there are these big trucks have you all seen guys in movies that uh, cleans the road that moves all the ice because otherwise you all can't travel in the road guys when when you're snowing when it's snowing your vehicle can't go in the road it can't go because there is ice in the road so there are, there are, there are trucks that are getting rid of that ice so you're paying money you're paying your taxes doing all of it to get rid of that so snow is also economic bad then diseases right you will somehow take medicine and vaccinations and all of it to get rid of it then any sort of pollution same story so all of these are called economic bads right uh snow is not scarce uh that is not the main characteristic again here method when you say economic bads we are not uh, trying to figure whether this is scarce the non scarce the anyway we are trying to figure out whether this is giving you positive satisfaction the negative satisfaction that's the distinguishing point 
So whether it's chaos or not chaos doesn't really make a difference. Fine. Step. The distinguishing feature is whether it's giving you satisfaction or not. Okay. Then, guys, now goods are also done. Remember, what are we doing, guys? We are preparing for this paper. Are you In this paper, now micro macro is done, uh, positive normative done, goods is also uh, uh, sorry, goods is also done. Now we have production resources. After that, we can do the paper. So, can you all make sure, guys, when you all get the tune, uh, can you make the short note? Can you all send me a picture also? You can send it on the group also. That will also be nice. That will motivate others also to do it. Can you okay? You can send it to me. I'll forward it on the group. If you all try to uh, send it directly on the group, you can make a nice colorful note, right? A short note. No, short note doesn't mean writing the same thing in the tute in small letters. That is not a short note, right? Make creative one. Have arrows and make a camera. If no, there is no space, put a sticky note, right? Do whatever you all want. And that area you have to finish studying today, not today, this week. And in the weekend, do unit number this. Okay, now we are now coming back. We were in the theory. Okay. Right. We'll go to resources. Now, how are these goods produced, guys? Now, goods don't fall from the sky, no. Yes, the rain falls from the sky. But goods have to be produced, no. So, what are resources, guys? Resources are the inputs. Resources are the inputs used to produce these goods and services. That's what you call a resource. Then resources also two types. What are the two types? Economic, non-economic. What are economic resources? Economic resources are the resources that are limited in supply. There is scarcity in that. Then what are non-economic resources? Non-economic resources are the resources that are unlimited in nature. Air, rain, water, sunlight, onatarantian. Now you have a small question. I said resources, right, goes into a production process, gets converted into goods. Okay. For economic resources, I gave examples like here land fuel. So economic resources are only guys, land, labor, capital, entrepreneurship. So this gets converted into goods. Let's say uh, economic goods. Okay, things like what? Let's say a pen, a paper, right? Example. Then I also gave non economic resources. Look at the examples sunlight, air, rainwater. Sunlight, air, rainwater. Can you tell me what are the examples I gave for? Uh, non-economic goods. For resources, I said sunlight, air, rainwater. For non-economic goods, what are the examples? Look at this. Non-economic goods, here also, uh, air, water, sunlight. How come? How come the uh, good and the resource is the same, guys? Now, I say I said resources are used to produce goods. So land, labor, capital, entrepreneurship goes to a production process, gets converted into pens, papers, and all of that. Then how come this non-economic resource and the non-economic good is the same? I would have taught this to all in the theory class. Can you all tell me how? We say resources go into a production process and become goods. These non-economic goods or non-economic resources, is there a production process? Do we make air, sunlight, rain and water? No, no. There is no production process. So, resources, once it goes to the production process, becomes a good. Okay? Non-economic resources, no production process, no. So, resource and the good is the same method. See, that's why, because if you practically think these are goods that not that's not made by human beings. So, do we make sunlight? Do we make air? Yeah, no, no. So, there is no human production process. So, that's why the resource and the good are both the same. Just remember that as well. Okay? So, what are economic resources? 
resources that are limited in supply compared to your unlimited world. What are non-economic resources? Resources that are unlimited, non-scarce. You have any amount of them. So you have that, right? Uh, natural resources are not uh, touched into that too. Okay. Now, if you take your economic resources, remember resources also, there is economic, non-economic. These economic resources, guys, are the resources that are classified as your factors of production. Factors of production. So what is the story now? Let me summarize the story, right? Uh, where do I make a new note from? Right, okay. Okay. If you take your resources, what resources? Production resources. If you take production resources, they are divided into Right, divided into two. What are they? One is non economic resources. You have non economic resources and you have economic resources, non economic and economic. These economic resources, I am saying, this is what you call your factors of production. Factors of production. So inside this, what do we have? We have land, we have labor, we have capital, and we have entrepreneurship. Is the breakdown clear, guys? There is production resources divided into non-economic and economic. Economic is what we say, the ones that are scarce, no? right? The ones that are scarce. That is broken down into land, labor, capital, entrepreneur. So now we'll go through these four quickly. Now most of you all know this, right? Now I have left some space for you all to uh, jot a few things down here. And right? when you all get the tutes, you all can do that. So what is land, guys? We say land is all natural resources that are gifted by nature, but they are scarce, right? All natural resources gifted by nature, which are scarce. That is what you call land. So, what are the characteristics gift of nature? That is easy. What is this second one? Supply being inelastic. What do you all think this means, guys? Supply being inelastic. Now, in elasticity, we study in unit number two. Now, by now, you all should have some idea. What does supply being inelastic mean? Hmm? Does that mean that the amount of land cannot be changed? Or does it mean that the amount of land is hard to change? Is it hard to change the amount of land? Or is it uh, you can't change at all? Now, remember, I am not saying that it is perfectly inelastic. No. Now, unit number two, perfectly inelastic means can't change at all. Inelastic means hard to change. Now, what are the examples for land? You can take trees. Uh, you can even take animals. Now, does this mean you can't change it at all? No, no. You can no increase the amount of trees. You can increase the amount of animals. But can you do this in a day or two? Can't. That's why we say supply being inelastic. In other words, what can you say? This means the amount of land, the amount of land cannot be increased easily. That's the easiest way. Cannot be increased easily. It's inelastic. I am not saying it's impossible to increase never. You can, you can have more and more animals. No, you can have more and more trees, but it's hard to. That's why we say yes, trees are planted by man, but it's a natural thing. No, guys, we plant the seed. No, we don't plant a big tree. No, it grows by nature, right? 
okay then second one third one we say immobility what does that mean that means it cannot be moved from place to place right so there is no geographical geographical mobility that's what you say that okay then possible to improve productivity we say non uniformity it's different then you also say payment for land is rent that is land guys doesn't it include intervention okay no it's like this case now when you say land we say land are these things gifted by nature now i understand that humans are the ones who put the plant humans humans are the ones who plant the seed but humans don't produce a tree no guys the tree is not spread now it's nature you know, that grows the tree that what you need to understand you might be putting the seed right so get that in your head uh non uniform then uh okay so what is non uniformity guys non uniformity means it's different so the land in one area is not the same as the land in another area land here different from the land there now if you take let's say a river a river in sri lanka might be different from a river in india uh, mahavali river might be different from the kalani river so that's what we said non uniform it's not the same okay uh, once again guys what is this inelastic mean inelastic means you can't increase the supply of land easily now uh, inelastic means can't change the think of a rubber band inelastic right the rubber band we say elastic means can change inelastic means can't change much right so what is supply being inelastic means supply being inelastic means it's hard to increase the amount of land that is there okay is that okay guys can you all have a, a read and let me know if land is okay tape the kela till then move to lab you can say a uh, payment for land being rent that also can be given as a characteristic okay right then we'll move to labor so if you take labor what are the characteristics yes immobility means cannot be moved i'll explain it over here also okay uh that's cool you didn't get mark maybe then don't write it there it's still uh carried is there in the teachers guide all right i don't know some teachers have some certain certain thing okay we look at labor labor number 1 we say is a life factor it's a living being then there is mobility in labor when we talk about mobility we talk about two types of mobility number 1 is geographical mobility what does that mean that means you can provide your labor at different different places i can work at home i can go to office i can work in india i can work in us i am geographically mobile right so there is geographical mobility and there is also occupational mobility what does this mean this mean i can do different different occupations right now i am a teacher my at my office i have a economic researcher so maybe i can stop teaching and i can let's say become a graphic designer so i can do different different occupations so i have occupational mobility as well okay have that in but that's what you say mobility in lab geographically and occupationally both it is mobile then heterogeneity heterogeneity means what guys heterogeneity means different you no know? so labor is the physical and mental effort of people so my physical and mental effort is not the same as your physical and mental effort right it's different no? you might have different skills i have different skills i can do something different than you heterogeneous then you can improve productivity through education and training uh they can make decisions and also you can say payment for land is pay just okay that's about uh sorry payment for labor is wage 
is that okay guys lab guys remember i am not teaching the theory right i am just recapping this it's a revision class okay now in my theory class i would have taken down half an hour one point point i would have gone so remember this is not a theory class it's a revision class so please make sure before the class right now today all i understand you all couldn't have done this so please make sure before the class you go through those focus areas so read your theory note make the short note do the paper and come then i will revise it with you all and do the paper that has to be the plan right you can't come for a revision class to learn something for the very first time if you have like a basic idea this is there to brush up and work on your answer right don't get that mistaken if some of you all don't know the theory guys you all can join the theory class you can also purchase the recordings of the theory class of the units that we have completed you can cover it that okay have that in mind okay then we'll go to capital guys what can we tell about capital capital we say is a man made factor obviously made by human being then we say it's a real factor can someone tell me what does this mean when we say capital is a real factor what does that mean real means guys it's a tangible it's a physical thing that's what we say real factor right so real means it's a tangible right or in other words it's a physical there is physical existence of it that's what you say it's a real factor then guys uh, what is this stock factor being a stock factor yes you can say visible loss no problem what is this uh, factor no labor is not a real factor labor is not the person guys labor is the physical and mental efforts of the person right ah uh, stock factor means you can measure this right measure measured at a given point of time now some of you all are confused what is this measured at a given point of time right here yeah. now when i say a uh, real factor guys we are talking about in general capital right we are talking about the fixed capital yeah we are not talking about i understand and inside capital there is human capital labor you know right but we are talking in general we are saying it's a real factor okay now then what is the stock factor we say stock factor means it can be measured at a given point of time what does that mean now can i say right now at this moment in my class in my class i have these these capital i have 10 units of capital can i say that i can say okay i have one laptop one ipad one camera one table one chair can i say at this given point i have 10 units of capital i can write so you can measure it at a point of time then what is the other thing of this one is stock factor what is the other factor are uh, a flow concept or a flow factor what is a flow concept a flow concept is something that is measured for a period of time right measured for a period now if i can i say my salary as at uh, 14th of august 544 pm is 50000 can i say that can i say at this point of time my salary is 50000 no no i can say for the period for the month of august my salary is 50000 i can say that no i can say for the month of august so that is what we call a flow concept a flow concept is something that is measured for a period of time a stock concept is something that is measured at a given point of time at this point i have this one that is a stock for a period of time we call it a flow concept now if i ask you guys what do you think about something like sri lanka's gdp do you think it's a flow or a stock 
what do you all think? Now, we have not learned GDP yet. We learn in unit number five. Huh? What do you all think? So, something like GDP, guys, is a flow concept. We measure GDP for a year. So, we say Sri Lanka's GDP for the year 2022 is this much. We don't say you know, GDP as at 14th August, uh, 5.55 p.m. is this much. No. Right? We give a period of time. That's what you call that. Then, uh, you can use it over and over again. Consists of productivity. Uh, it depreciates, right? The more and more you use it, your capital depreciates and the return for capital is it. So have a basic idea about this as well. Then guys, number four. From here, I will uh, wrap it up and then we'll go for the paper. Uh, why is money not capital, guys? I'll uh, come to that. I think there is a note in this as well. You can uh, read. I'll come to it maybe the next class. Okay? Because uh, I'll, I'll quickly rough, uh, run you all through it. So why is money not capital, guys? Money is not capital because capital, we say, is a real asset. Something that is used in the production process to convert inputs into outputs. Now, money doesn't convert inputs into outputs, no, guys. Can you produce something with money? Can't you? You can produce something with a machine. You can produce something in a factory. You can produce something in you know, this one. So, money is not capital. What is capital? The machine, the building. Those only help convert. So, we say money is simply what? A medium of exchange. And money is used to buy capital. Money is not capital. Money is simply a medium of exchange used to buy capital. That's what is, that's what money is about, right? You can have an idea. Then guys, uh, coming to entrepreneurship. Again, very easy, guys. So what are what is entrepreneurship? Right? Entrepreneur uh, mobilizes the factors of production. In other words, he gets everyone together. He organizes the activities. Tell, okay, you do this, you do this, right? We'll do this. He organizes. He introduces innovations and also takes the risk. Uh, these parts, guys, you all can read. These are very uh, simple. So I want you all this week, right? Now, these small, small parts, guys, I didn't uh, go through much. There is a, a question about economic overhead capital in our paper. Then I will uh, go through this, okay? So I want you all, this week, once you all get your tweet, until this page, until page number nine, can you all read, read, study, and make your short note and put in uh, revision paper one. Revision paper one, if the first page is not enough, you can use the last two pages also. Those are blank pages. Your, when you all get, you all will see. Can you all do that? Until page number, uh, until page nine. That is homework for this week. Go through your theory notes, right? Uh, refer whatever that is in the theory. This, now, you can refer this, your theory to You can either refer this uh, theory recap to that is there, right? Whatever note that you have, go through until this area. Make your short note and finish it off there. Okay. Now, right, so today since we took the extra time for this thing only i got a little late now we'll go to revision paper one okay so i have the one with the answers also i will share this to you uh, uh once the class is done so the answers guys i have not printed and sent you because then you all copy the answers no? so after we discuss every paper the answers will be there on our website now first month i will just uh, share it on the group because it's a free class now so after that, the answers will be there on my website. You can download and get a printout. Though even if you don't get a printout, you can mark your answers looking at it. Okay. Shall we take a small five-minute break to walk around also? And I think in half an hour, I can finish this. So uh, I'll go until around 6.30, 6.40. Uh, there are some interesting questions in the paper, right? Uh, the paper, usually the questions are a little harder. Okay. I've uh, taken some past papers, turned it around. Right, made some of my own questions. So we'll take a small five minute uh, break and then we'll come for the paper. Okay, I think in half an hour, 40 minutes, I can finish discussing the paper.
so we'll take a break till uh how much uh now it's 5 50 no we'll take a break until 5 55 walk around drink some water onto the washroom and come back we'll go through the revision paper one okay take a break and come. 